Hey, buddy, Fred Ruler 31, back here for FSI DFS. Uh, don't have my normal setup today. I'm uh, actually up in my hometown, Syracuse, New York. That's why I drew Old MacArthur Stadium, where I used to go watch ball games as a kid. In the background, Dad has an appointment, so I'm in the parking lot filming this because the show must go on. So, large slate today, 14 games. All but two teams are playing. They're playing at 220. The Brewers and Cubs, everybody else is on the slate. So, let's blow through this quickly and get you set up. And um, the right tab up here for the video here today before we uh, and we're not starting out great at all. So it's like Wizard of Oz, do not look behind the curtain. Okay, there we go. Got the right slate here. So um, Reds and Pirates, Ascraft and Wilson. I think you could potentially use both pitchers. Um, not really too much K upside on either side here, but they're both against bad teams. I don't think you're going to need it. I think there's enough value. Like, no, no secret today, San Francisco's going to be top slack on the slate. They're in cores. As long as the rain holds off, it does look like some going to be okay. But at DK, they are so cheap. And on FanDuel, you never play any of these pitchers because they're you're not going to get the quality starter enough um, points out of them. So um, DK, if you want them as an SP2, I'm okay with it. Both sides of it, I think you're okay. Both pitchers struggle with left-handed power. So um, either side here, but I think I like the Reds, especially like Freely, like leading off at 2-5. Um, Moustaka should be back in there. Joey Votto is done for the rest of the season, so he's not in there. So um you know, don't play him. Blue Jays and Yankees. I, yesterday, if you watched the video, or I, we keep on saying it time to time, you want to target teams against Detroit. You want to target teams against LA. You want to target teams against um, Cincinnati, against Pittsburgh. Um, there's just like so many teams that have just kind of mailed it in. And the Yankees haven't, but they've just been horrible recently. I played Barrios yesterday and almost took down a GPP with a J stack um, mixed in. Actually, I punted like a second base, and the, the guy from Washington hit a home run. They had like 21 points, and that like really put me over the top there. But um, I love the Yankees, but they are just hurting right now. They're just not hitting. I don't know if it's like Rizzo being banged up or Stanton or uh, Carpenter out of the lineup or what's going on, but they are definitely free-falling. Um Losing their lead. The Jays are surging. They're doing well. So Gossman, I think, is definitely in play here against them. Um, and Talion on the other side, I wouldn't really play him. He's been strong against righties, worse against lefties, but really don't have any interest in him because I think the Jays have just been so solid recently, even though they have more right-handed lineup. But I think they definitely make an interesting GVP play. I think the Yankees would be like one of the number one leverage stacks because eventually you think they're going to put it together, but are we going to keep on wasting money until we see it consistently? I, I don't know if we want to do that in cash and um, maybe in a GPP, but not much money on it. Uh, next up, we have the Red Sox and Orioles. Nine total, really healthy one here. Cutter Crawford and Jordan Lyles. Again, you have um, two average pitchers here. Uh, Orioles have been better recently, and the Red Sox haven't been striking out as much and are getting healthy. So I don't think either one of these pitchers are, pitchers are great, but Crawford, I think you can get enough value out of him at 6'4 on, on DK if you need him for an SP2. So I think he's going to be my favorite cheap guy here today. Bat-wise, love both sides. Left-handed batters on Boston, especially because Lyles um, really also struggles with left-handed power. So Devers, Verdugo, Hosmer, you could probably even play like um, either Fam, Bogarts, or JD if you want to make a five-man stock. Um, Arroyo is like super cheap at 2K if you want to throw him in there. If another left-handed guy like Duran or somebody gets a, um, a, a start and is higher up in the lineup or correlates well, then I'm fine with that also. Baltimore on the other side, same thing. Lefties, um, Mullins, Rushman's a switch hitter. Like them better hitting against uh, – righties and or lefties and righties but i think he's okay here santander so um Cavaria is always cheap at uh second base outfield um so there's some plays there also mets and phillies got two decent pitchers here you got chris bass and nola bass has been good recently um looks like and he's been solid against righties, and mostly the guys left on Philly are right-handed batters here. I mean, they might have Stott leading up. He doesn't super scare me here. Derek Hall's okay. I don't think Schwarber's going to be the lineup. He's been banged up. He might be back with a calf injury, but even so, I think Bassett's fair at 9-5. I think he gets enough done to have some floor, but he doesn't have, like, a super amount of upside for GPPs. Nola on the other side, I think, is a very solid pitcher. I think between he and McClanahan and Snell are going to be, like, the top ones on the slate. 
I think McClanahan, if he bounces back, is the top guy, but he has been kind of erratic recently. Snell's got a great matchup against um, Washington, so I think Nola would be number three here, but he could be, like, number one, depending on, you know, um, how you're looking at things. I think, like, with raw points and consistency, he's been very, very good. White Sox and Guardians, you have Lance Lynn and Tristan McKenzie. Uh, Lance Lynn looks kind of underpriced here, but I don't really like playing a bunch of guys against Cleveland. They don't have a ton of power, but they don't strike out much and they do hit pretty well. They've got a decent total. So, um, Lance Lynn's okay. I think I have him in the no interest section, but if you want to move him over into the cheap section, I think you can make a case for him. But I, I think there's other guys that I would like rather pay up a little bit more for or go down on. He's kind of no man's land. So that's how I feel about him. Mackenzie, uh, the strikeouts come down a little bit. The control's gone up, so he's not getting blown up as much, not walking as much, not striking out as much. So he's become a better all-around pitcher. So I think, you know, if you want to pay up for a pitcher and you're playing like 20 max or 150 max, he definitely should go in there because, as we always said, the White Sox are hot or cold, and you never know which um, way they're going to be at, at what point. So um, not super interested in the um, bats here. I left the, the White Sox off. They should be right here. So I think both these teams, if you're playing 150 max, are fine, but I'm not super interested in any bats here at all. Next, you have the Angels and Detroit Tigers. We've been targeting pitchers against Detroit. So Sandoval, I think, makes a lot of sense here at 7-2. Um, uh, Manning on the other side, there's really no K upside. He's a good young pitcher, and I think he'll develop eventually, but he's not there yet. And the Angels are in a great lineup to really – take advantage of that besides oh it looks like Mike Trout might be back so maybe they might be a little bit better but so I think I just throw both teams in the leftover bin here for bats and for pitchers Sandoval I think you can play and Matt Manning is definitely no interest to a fade for me Kansas City and Tampa Bay you've got two really good pitchers here Spring Singer has been outstanding he has been putting up some points and Tampa Bay has some strikeouts here looks like Lyle's back in the lineup I know he's been banged up recently um but they're still not super, super scary here. And, and they only have like a 3.87 total and it's a pitcher's park. So really, really like Singer here. And uh, McClanahan on our side, like I said, is probably the top pitcher on the slate if you can get up to him and pay up to him. It's kind of hard in FanDuel because the Giants are priced up there to get to him. You can get to like Nola or Snell, but McClanahan's a little bit too expensive um, to get another stack in there unless you're going like cheap one-offs. So I mean, it might make your life a little bit different there. On DK, I think you can get him in there if you want to. And I think it's relatively easy with the pricing of San Francisco to go to McClanahan Nola or McClanahan Snell or Snell Nola and pay up for both and get a, another decent stack with them. And we'll get to that lineup pretty quick. So I'm not interested in any of the bats in this. They'd just be contrarian um, options or Kansas City potentially if you think McClanahan's still going to continue to struggle and they can take advantage of that. Houston and the Braves, again, Lance McCullough and Kyle Wright are decent pitchers, but both have had their struggles against good offenses here. A little bit of rain in the forecast. Looks like 60% uh, tapering off later. And so maybe a delayed start here. But again, with the pitchers, I don't know. It might be a little bit risky. Uh, the offense is not super interested in here. I think they'd be GPP only, pitchers GPP only. Um, I think I'm just going to kind of cross off this game here. I know Houston put up a ton of runs yesterday. Um, Atlanta has the potential to do that also. But I just think on this slate with 14 games, every team playing, you really don't need them unless you're doing 150 max. Texas and Minnesota, Martin Perez and Dylan Bundy. Perez has been solid recently. He Two games ago, he had a little bit of a hiccup, but uh, bounced back last one um, was better. Minnesota has been just so erratic and hitting here. It looks like they have their full lineup out there. <clears throat> Sorry. And they, sh <clears throat> they should be ready to go. But um, Texas, um, I, I, against Bundy, again, we, we've been like, propping him up as like a great matchup recently. And I think this is where it ends. Not that I really like Bundy. I have really no interest in him either, especially with a little bit of rain here, potentially early in the game, but it looks like it should dry out and they should be able to get it in. So again, this is another 150 match, just like that Cleveland and, and White Sox game. And for bats and prez, if you want to sprinkle them into some of your GPP lineups, I'm fine with that. I'm not, not super interested. Okay, now Coors Field. We have the Rockies and the Giants. We have Alex Wood and Jose Urania. Urania is one of the worst pitchers um, 
In baseball, Alex Wood is a decent pitcher, but I don't really like him in Coors Field, especially against a heavy right-handed lineup for Colorado. So looks like the wind's blowing in nine miles per hour, so it might neutralize hitting, and it might be a little bit wet, about 30% chance of rain. So mild concern, but not super much. But these Giants are super, super cheap. Wade leading off probably 2-4. Um, Peterson, 3K. Flores, 3-8. Brandon Bell, 2-8. Um, Brandon Crawford is still 2K. The catcher, Bar 2.5. Yes, Strumsky, 2.9. Super, super, super cheap for Coors Field. Um, Rocky's on the other side. Joe's leading off now. He's been ice cold. I'm just hoping moving up to the top of the lineup there might help him out a little bit. Uh, but Iglesias, Rogers, Kron, Gritchick, all those guys have been solid. Moreno hitting the fifth or sixth spot there at first base at 2.8 is decent also. Um, the catcher's kind of expensive at, at 3-7 if, if that guy's in. But Wilton Bernard is a 2K guy in Coors Field. Could do a wraparound stack there or put him in instead of Joe and, and save some salary. So um, definitely like Colorado, too. I think San Diego stands out um, be, between the two of them, but San Francisco and Colorado are definitely top two stacks tonight. So talking about the Padres here up against the Nationals, um, Pablo Espanino is a no for me, Blake Snow. Has had his struggles, but this Washington team is um, set up, I think, uh, to be a really good matchup for him. So he's my second favorite pitcher on the slate here. Uh, Washington Bass not interested. They don't need a leverage thing. If you think Snell struggles or something tonight. And then the Padres, I like them. The pricing is just so high on them. And if I look at the box scores, like Profire, Soto, and Manny have been fine in Cronyworth, but Drury and Bell have been cold recently. So I don't know. Maybe this is another good right spot for them against Espinino. Uh, against, I guess they'll probably eventually get going. I mean, there's many different ways to stack San Diego. I like them. Um, not a priority here, but if Coors gets rained out, I think they'd be one of the top stacks on, on the slate. Seattle and Oakland um, looking at Gonzalez and Cole Irving here. Both pitchers, I think, are okay. I don't really like Irvin as much as I have it recently just because Seattle has so much right-handed power here. Um, Gonzalez on the other side, like we like pitchers against um, Oakland, Detroit, like we keep saying it over and over again. So I think he definitely falls into play here. Bat-wise, um, either side of it, not um, super interesting either one, although I think Seattle makes an interesting cheap um, – GPP stack with the right-handers against Irving. Cardinals and Diamondbacks, uh, Miklas and Henry, not interested in Henry. Miklas has been pretty solid recently. Arizona can throw a lot of lefties at him, so I think in the mid-range you could play him. Cardinals, I like against Henry here, a lefty, and they pretty much have a lot of right-handed power, and that Arizona ballpark sometimes um, can produce some runs. And then uh, Arizona on the other side against Miklas, I think you could maybe play as, as another – Cheap stack there, just take the lefties and the GPP. Final game, Marlins and Dodgers, Jesus Luisado against Tyler Anderson. Anderson's been solid recently, and he's cheap for a Dodgers pitcher, but he generally gets like three or four Ks a game, but he could go decent. Um, probably a better fan duel play where you could probably pick up the quality start and go a bunch of um, – get at least six innings of um, baseball with under their three runs there. But like I said, the K upside, especially – against the Marlins. Wind's blowing out a little bit here at Dodger Stadium at 11 miles per hour, 75 degrees, so helps hitting a little bit. Um, Lizardo, I'm not really touching him against the Dodgers. He'd be a fade. He's a decent pitcher, but I don't like him in this context. So let me just run through things quickly for those who are listening on the podcast. McClanahan, Snell, Nola, McKenzie, Bassett are the top pitchers I like. Um, in the high range, medium range, Gossman against the Yankees or struggled singer. I really, really, really like against Tampa Bay. Anderson's okay. I think it might be better on FanDuel. Mikolas and Perez might be a little rain in that game. Cheap ones, Crawford, and it, it's pretty much the guys playing the lesser teams that can't hit, have no power. Sandoval, Gonzalez, Irving, and Ashcraft. I uh, said Irving might be a little bit risky here, though, with the power from the right-handed side that uh, Seattle brings you. Fading your Urena and um, Coors, Espino, Lyles, Henry, and Lozado. No interest in Woods, McCullough, Wright, Tylen, Manning, Bundy, Wilson, or Lynn today. Top stacks are San Francisco, San Diego, and Colorado, St. Louis, and the Dodgers. GPP, 
Boston and Baltimore take the lefties there. They both um, are in a really good matchup against each other. Atlanta and Houston, GPP only, decent pitchers that have a couple issues with good offenses, so don't know which one that's going to go. Maybe some rain there, so could be quite messy. And then Toronto against Talion, even though he's good against righties, um, I think they've just been hot recently, so they might be overcome that. And cheap ones, Cincinnati, love Seattle righties, lefties of Arizona and Tampa Bay, and then your leverage stacks would be New York, Yankees and Mets against decent pitchers, um, Philadelphia, KC, and Washington, and then I'm just really no interest in Pittsburgh, the dot or the Angels, even with Trout back, Detroit or Oakland. And then if you're playing 150 max, Cleveland, Minnesota, Texas, and the White Sox are just kind of there. You include them if you want to. If not, that's no big deal. Okay, let's look at these um, lineups to get you on your way for today. So, like I said, I'm paying up McCann and Hannah Nola. If you want to go McCann and so that's fine. I'm here. Um, Belt, Machado, Crawford, Peterson, Wade. I can get San Diego in here. With San Francisco, just because their pricing is so egregiously low. So that's why I'm going for cash. So I'm taking Belt at first base. Second base, you can take Cronenworth. Or you can take um, Flores from San Francisco. Probably going to punt catcher um, if, or play Bart if um, I want to. But I think I want to give um, some other San Francisco bats in here. So Crawford at shortstop and minimum price. Peterson, Wade Jr. If you want to put um, Yastrzemski in there, if he's a better spot than Peterson, that's fine too. Um, get him in there as your fifth guy if that works, or you know, put Profar or Soto or, or somebody in there. It, it, it pretty much works to get um, you have a lot of salary left with San Francisco, and you can get Soto and Machado in there and um, almost have like a mini stack of San Diego or take one of the San Francisco guys out, go more San Diego, be a little bit different. That works too. Uh, for FanDuel, like I said, it's a little harder, so I'm taking Nola, I'm taking Belt, Flores at second base, third base wherever it fits for you. Wade, I'm going to take Jack or Yastrzemski, and then I'm going to take the left-handed guys for um, Baltimore. So Mullins or Santander there. Um, might have to punt shortstop if you don't take Crawford. Uh, but um, I think I'd, I'd rather play up for like one of the outfielders with Flores and Belt, but um, however, you, however you want to play it there. So Try to get, um, if you get four Baltimore guys in, if not, then three, and then punch shortstop if you don't like um, the option there, play around with it. Um, but San Francisco and Baltimore is the stack with Nola as the pitcher. If you can get up in the clan hand, that's fine. If you want to play Snell also, that's also fine there. For GPPs, I'm taking Snell and Singer, and I'm stacking Colorado and Boston for this one. So um, catcher, I'll let you figure out who you want there. First base, you can take Hosmer, you can take... Um, if you can get up to some of the, the Colorado guys like Joe, like I said, if you want him there or um, Kron, uh, Rogers, the second base, Devers at third base, Xander Bogart, shortstop, or I'm fine if you want to switch out and take um, the Iglesias, I'm, I'm good with that too. Uh, Hampton, fam, like so, however, you want to finish that one off. FanDuel, Singer, Kron. Rogers, Devers, I uh, love Singer as a uh, SP one here on FanDuel. So, Crown Rogers, Devers, shortstop, whichever guy you want from either Boston or for um, Colorado, Verdugo, Grichik, and then fill out the rest the same way. You might need to take one off. Like I said, Fraley's cheap outfielders or some other guys in great situations there too that you can and take um, as, as a one off just to fill out your lineup. So, Again, thanks for putting up with this um, lower tech uh, version of the video out on the street with the locusts buzzing and the construction people driving by and horns beeping. So appreciate your patience on that. But um, I'm Mega Ruler 31. If you have any questions, put them on the um, comments below. Try to get back to you today. In between, I'll be traveling a little bit, but McCullin and I will look at it. I'll definitely be back home by lock. So be able to. Uh, Check that out for you too. Hit me up at MegRuler31 on Twitter. Check out FSI DFS. We've got many things going on. Preseason football. Um, we got soccer going on this weekend. We got NASCAR. We got PGA. Um, all, all kinds of cool stuff um, for you. So check out our packages there. Very, very inexpensive. Uh, very, very good, good coverage and customer service for you. And uh, please, if you like this, um, like this video, if it's helping you out, it really helps us out, gets out to more people and share with your friends so they can be helped also and uh, subscribe to our videos so you know when they're all coming out. So appreciate you watching. I'm Mega Ruler 31 I'll see you next time. Good luck in your contest tonight. 
And uh, check back around 6.30, like I said, with the rain games and stuff. Uh, I'll throw any um, updates there as usual if I get the major needs break. So see you next time.